Hello, and welcome to Cavalier Connection. I'm Casey Sanders. And I'm Carly Shiver. The interim president of Darton State College, Dr. Paul Jones, sat down with Darton Student Television for his first public interview since taking over as interim president on October 21st. JT Fellows sat down with Dr. Jones and has the story. Hello everyone, I'm JT Fellows. I'm being joined now by Dr. Paul Jones, interim president of Darton State College. Dr. Jones, good morning. Thanks for joining me today. Glad to join you, JT. Let's rewind the clock here to your first day on the job as interim president. What was your first impression of the college? Well, I think that um, going back uh, almost four weeks now, uh, great first impression. Obviously, the change was uh, a significant change, and I was still trying to figure out where I was on day one. Uh, but I think in terms of my impression, the people were wonderful. I think uh, I knew that I came to a place that, uh, that people cared deeply about the institution. Uh, and I think people genuinely wanted to help get me off to a good start. Uh, so I felt really good about uh, being here, although there was a great deal of anxiety upon my arrival, as you can imagine. Is there something in particular that you would like to accomplish here? Well, you know, my, as I've told people from day one, my agenda is clear. It's to really help move Darden State College to the next level of excellence. Um, I don't come with a hidden agenda. I come with an agenda really to help this institution to, and to build up on the foundation that uh, has been built here. I think Dr. Sabrino had extraordinary uh, vision. Uh, he certainly accomplished a great deal, and, and my hope is that I can contribute in some way in helping this institution move forward. Now, what's the difference between an interim president and president as far as duties and responsibilities are concerned? Well, good question, JT. You know, I would say that uh, you, as interim or the permanent president, you have the same rights, uh, privileges, responsibilities um, as you would as a permanent president. I think the main difference is that uh, as an interim, you know that your time is, is short, whatever that time frame would be, versus the permanent president where you can begin to lay out an agenda that may take you into the next three or five years. That's not the case here. Um, however, that doesn't mean that you come and put it in neutral, um, that you, you still want to make sure you're contributing to the institution and trying to, to move it uh, uh, forward. It's a unique opportunity, I think, for the institution when they have a interim president because this is a time that we can examine our strengths and weaknesses and really began to lay that foundation um, and address maybe some of the issues or challenges that we may have so that as the next president comes in, you've done a good job of doing that. And you don't always have that uh, luxury of doing that. So it's a real opportunity uh, for, I think, the institution at this point in time. Now, I know you've been interim president before. Um, is there a lot of pressure for you in particular as being interim president? Well, you know, again, as a senior administrator, you have, uh, uh, there's always pressure. Um, I'm a former athlete, so I understand pressure quite well, and uh, uh, I've never ran from pressure. And, and so uh, I would say that um, uh, for me, I think it's a unique opportunity that I've, that I've had the, the first time and the second time. Uh, however, I, I don't feel uh, any more pressure than I you know, did in any other other in, in any other other responsibilities or roles that I played over the last 20, 27, 28 years of my career. In November, it was announced that Southern Polytechnic State University and Kennesaw State University would, would be merging. Do you think there's a merger possible in Darton's future? You know, again, I, I answer this question the same way every time. Um, there's no discussion that I've had with the Board of Regents or with the Chancellor. And I'm not going to spend my time focused on something that I don't have any control over. I think what we need to do at Darton State College is really to focus on the things that we can control and do the best possible job that we can do so that whatever happens, whatever happens with Darton State College in the next 10, 15, whatever that time frame is, um, that they will do well by Darton State College. I think the key for all of us is to ensure that we're serving Southwest Georgia to the best of our ability. And that's what I want this institution to focus on because, quite frankly, I don't have any control over those things. And so I'm not going to stress about the what ifs. Uh, I'm going to spend my time in a positive way. Now, you hold an undergraduate degree in journalism. Do you feel like you ever get to use that degree now in your current profession? 
Absolutely. Um, that, I, I think I was telling someone earlier, um, not today, but a few weeks ago, about um, what that, what impact that's had on me. I think I've used that, just like I talk about my athletic uh, uh, background, that uh, there were a lot of transferable skills. And I think the same is true with journalists. I write, I speak, I, I do a number of things. So while I'm not a reporter, per se, um, I spend a lot of time utilizing those, those skills right at this moment. Uh, so, so I think that uh, I would say the answer to that is absolutely. Now, you've been in higher education for more than 25 years. Um, do you know if there's any uh, trends now that could affect the future of higher education? Yeah, there's certainly a lot of trends. Uh, I think these are some challenging times for higher education. There's a tremendous shift today uh, in, in higher ed and the things that we're facing today. I think we're at a critical time in higher education where we have uh, a number of things we're calling disruptions, technology being, being one of those. We also have to be concerned about the cost of higher education and the, um, certainly Darden State College has done an extraordinary job of keeping costs down. But there are all these things that are going on. The, the general public's perception of higher education is probably at an all-time low. And so I think we got to build that confidence again in uh, the, the, pe the very people who support higher education. Uh, but I do think there, there are uh, a number of factors that we're facing today that um, we've not faced before. And, um, you know, certainly the, the support uh, uh, coming from the state has declined over the years as the state has seen uh, other issues arise, uh, you know, whether it's health care or the correction facility, whatever the case may be. So all of those things, I think, are things that have some impact on higher education. The nursing program at Darton is the only program that offers a four-year program. When will other programs offer four-year degrees? Uh, excellent question. You know, when I came on board, that was the very first question that I asked. And what I wanted to learn was, whether or not we have been having these discussions with, uh, within the campus community, but also if we have this, had any discussions with the Board of Regents. What I learned in uh, conversations with a number of people is that we have submitted at least two additional baccalaureate programs, um, and they're at the proposal stage. And so, and they're in the healthcare, uh, health-related areas. Uh, I think part of it, and I think, again, this is a really uh, good opportunity, I think, for Darden State College is to really take a moment to, to re-examine where we're, where we're going, what we'd like to do, what programs make the most sense for this institution um, uh, going forward. So I think we want to have a lot of discussions. Uh, certainly we can't do all things, and I think that's one of those trends that we've been able to do that for many, many years, but no longer can we do that. So whatever we do, let's do it at a high uh, level of excellence. And so I want us to begin to have those conversations uh, uh, so we can really think about what makes the most sense. Where, can, where should we expend our, our resources going forward? But I do know those two programs are in the, in the health-related area, and I believe they're respiratory care, uh, health, uh, respiratory care and the health, health informatics program. Now, how long do you imagine you'll be here at Darden serving as the interim president? Um, I don't know. Um, I know that, uh, at least right now, that uh, I'll be here at a minimum of one year uh, through the academic year, um, but I don't know. I think, uh, I think a lot of that depends on how we're able to address some of our challenges and begin to uh, focus on what are those opportunities that we can uh, address over the coming months. Uh, uh, but at this particular time, I know at least I'm here 12 months. All right, we're going to end it right there. Dr. Paul Jones, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate your time. Thank you, JT. Appreciate it. Coming up after the break, we'll take you to the International Festival. And we'll speak with Darton Administration to see if there will be some changes to the food services at the cafeteria. Stay with us. I grew up in the housing projects of Cleveland. I didn't even know that life could be any better than it was. Education for me has been a way to get away from the agony of what was normal life. I want to be able to impact the community, not just look back on where I came from, but to reach back to where I came from and pull some people up with me.
My name is David, and I am your dividend. Darton's show, concert, and chamber choirs came together with Darton's guitar ensemble to give audience members a taste of Christmas cheer at the first annual Ring and Sing Along. In addition to traditional Christmas music, the performance also gave audience members a taste of the classical side of Christmas music. The event, which was held in the theater lobby, had two solos, a bell ensemble, delicate piano artistry, and a guest violinist. James Strotter, a Darton student, says it was an amazing performance that he really enjoyed. It was a really great concert. Like, I enjoyed everything about it. Even the kids enjoyed the performance. I loved it. What was your favorite It's when they sang, like, the boys would do dum 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 and the, do that part. In addition to singing, Audience members are treated to a guest performance by the concert master for the Albany Symphony Orchestra. Our guest violinist is the concert master for the Albany Symphony Orchestra and we were just really grateful that he was able to come and perform this with us today. He was really good. I'm a huge fan of the violin, so I kind of have a biased opinion on that. And I just, oh, it was great. Everything was amazing. This is Carly Shiver reporting for Cavalier Connection. <laughs> Students had an opportunity to showcase other countries by serving food and performing live music. Our own Casey Sanders takes us to the International Festival. Earlier this month, Darton State hosted its annual International Festival. The International Festival gives foreign students a chance to share their culture with their peers, and it provides a great opportunity to learn about all of the different countries represented at Darton State. Gil Mora, part-time advertising supervisor at Darton State, says that more than 30 countries were represented at the festival. Well, the International Festival, we, it's an event that we do every year. Um, I'm an international, I'm from Brazil, and last year I was a student here, and we uh, participated in that, in that festival. And this year, uh, we're, I'm helping to organize it, and it was awesome. We had more than 30 countries representative here. The International Festival also provided multiple types of entertainment for students. We had more than 30 different dishes. We had more than five countries on the stage. We had dancings, we had dances, we had people singing, we had other type of presentation like fashion show, flag show. So if you come to this event every year, you're gonna get a sample of 30 different countries around the world. For many foreign students at Darton State, the chance to represent their country is an honor. You know, uh, for me, International Festival is, um, first of all, like the friendship among uh, all the nations, all the cultures. And, and second, uh, secondly, like for me, is like uh, introducing my culture, specifically my culture, to everybody else. Uh, and, and, I, and I know that uh, for every inter international student, it's an honor to present their country. Darden student Caitlin McDonald says that she thoroughly enjoyed the festival. I like all the different countries and the music and the different performances and getting to meet people that are actually from those countries and get to learn a little bit more about them. For Cavalier Connection, this is Casey Sanders reporting. At the Fall Student Forum, students asked several questions about the food service at the cafeteria. Jeremy Hayes spoke to Darton administration to find out if they will be making any changes to the food services. Students have voiced their concerns such as pricing and food variety in the calf to Darton's head officials. Tracy Gould heard them as well and is concerned too. I heard that the, that the students, some of the services were not the same and I'm sure there's uh, an explanation to that and right now I don't know that explanation but um, I'm sure we'll figure that out together. Head officials such as Dr. Gary Barnett came up with a solution to fix the problems so that everyone would be happy. I also understand that uh, Dr. Gary Barnett, our Vice President for Student and Academic Affairs, uh, has brought up a solution where the students will sit down and speak with him or a committee of, of people here at the college and uh, just talk about those services because uh, as always we're dedicated to excellence for our students within the means that we have here available to us. I understand there's certain things that maybe not everybody knows about that goes into planning a menu or planning a summer menu versus spring or fall. 
And all those things can be taken into consideration. And when the uh, administration and some of the people on the uh, cafeteria side sit down with students and with um, the administration here from Darton State College, I'm sure that a solution will be worked out that uh, everybody will be happy with. And uh, we can go on continuing to the, the best service that Darton State College can provide for our students. Some students, such as LaCambria Mallory, feels that the calf is healthy, which is a huge plus. Far, I do feel like the cat food is good, but I do feel like it's not enough variety. I do feel like it's healthy, some of it is not, but overall, it is good. Variety seems to be most students' concern. Shaquille Harry, a student at Darton, came from a school that had vending. Yeah, uh, a place called Wow, World of Vendingery. Um, it works pretty much like how this school got uh, Darton books that had flicks, and you know, you have like $500 on Flex, and you can go in there when the cafe ain't open, or if you just don't want to eat the cab, and you can just swap your car, or you can buy like wings, chicken tenders, hamburgers, quesadillas, wraps, and then um, in TMB they had uh, Chick-fil-A, Bajas, Freshens, and uh, another place called Fahrenheit. The main concern for students is change. It's kind of like we still in high school, because you know, you got to go through the line and get your tray, and I mean, they have different varieties of stuff, but at the same time, it'd be the same stuff every day. And I feel like, you know, if we did have varieties of restaurants, people would probably eat in here more because I don't even eat in cafe anymore. I go to McDonald's or Subway outside and bring it in here. Like, So a change would be good. I've been here for around uh, four or five semesters, and the food has been the same all the time. You know, we always have the grill over there, the hamburgers, the chicken tenders, and then the wraps over there. And it's been the same, like, throughout. I have friends that have come here and left, and, like, when they come back, it, the food has been the same all the time. It's nothing changed on it. So I feel the same way. It's time for a change. If they change the food, uh, it will be different. More people will be more, more likely to come eat at the cafeteria. Good and other officials feel that the best and possible solution will be explored. Sure of the possibility of outside vendors coming on the campus. I personally, I don't have the information there, but um, with the uh, conversations that Dr. Barnett's office and and looking at our contracts, I'm sure that a solution will, will be uh, at least explored. Uh, there could be contracts in place that don't allow it, or there could be things that allow it. We don't. Uh, I don't have that information at this time, but. I'm certain uh, the best possible solution can be worked out and, and will be explored. From Cavalier Connection, Jeremy Hayes reporting. There's still more to come here on Cavalier Connection. After the break, we'll tell, tell you about the men's basketball club and the recent changes they have made. And we'll also tell you what you can do to help Darton's recycling program. Stay tuned. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. Thanks for staying with us here on Cavalier Connection. You may have noticed three new structures on Darton's campus. Starting next semester, students will be able to lock their bikes in these bike shelters. They were built after students expressed concern about bike thefts on campus. The shelters are located at both of the dorms and near the F building. Officials say more could be built in the future. The steel cage design was actually inspired by shelters at other college campuses. Rodney Apperson explains the security features of these shelters. They have a card swipe, uh, so as you can go in, park your bicycle, use your own personal lock inside the cage. Uh, the cage has a uh, cameras, so they can tell who goes in. Uh, if the somebody bicycle goes missing, they can tell if it's they're using somebody else's card by the time frame. These buildings will not be operational until the spring 2014 semester. When students walk into a classroom to take a test, some panic, their minds go blank, and some start breathing heavily. Russell Romain talks to faculty and staff who offer tips to prevent testing anxiety. With final exams right around the corner, issues such as testing anxiety always occur. 
Student Success Program Director Carol Ann Ham thinks that test and anxiety is caused from personality traits and a lack of preparation from students. A lot of times it's, it's just a personality. You know, if you have that tendency to be a worry wart to begin with, then tests are uncomfortable. Some people just are not natural born test takers. You know, they're very good with hands-on material, but the second you give them a written exam, it's, it's a challenge for them. It's not part of their learning style. The director of crisis counseling, Ryan Tindall, breaks down the steps students can take to avoid tests and anxiety. Number one, to be prepared um, for the test by studying well ahead of time, not just the night before, that kind of stuff, and preparing at a lengthier time frame prior to going into the test. And then once they get into the test, they can also remember that, you know, it's one test and work on things that they can do to help themselves relax while taking the test. Just taking simple things as taking deep breaths and that kind of stuff to be in the right mind frame, be relaxed, that way they can perform their best. Darton student Dania Kim explains how her test and anxiety is due mainly to a fair failing examinations. I would probably get nervous like the night before or right before I start the test, I'll get nervous. And then as I start the exam and start to do the questions, then I'll kind of like get more relaxed. I get anxiety because um, I guess that feeling of failing plus um, not being quite prepared, and pretty much that's where the anxiety comes from. <laughs> this is Russell Romaine reporting. could invest in the future. The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. The basketball club made some changes recently to their schedule by adding more games and are now playing college teams. Casey Sanders gives us the details. After its founding two years ago, the Darden State Men's Basketball Club has made significant improvements. Contributing to the improvement of the club is the changes in how the program is being run. Coach Todd Street says that organization is the major difference in the program this year. It's more organized, very much more organized. We, uh, the kids have curfew sometimes, they have study hall, um, when we go out of town they have to wear ties, um, so we try to present ourselves as a basketball team. One of the other major differences for the club this year is the dramatic change in the schedule. The club will now be playing actual college teams instead of other club teams, and will also be playing more games than ever before. Street says that all of this came about with new head coach, Levi Williams. Um, well, we had a new coach come in, Coach Levi Williams. Um, from uh, Sebring, Florida. Um, he's been in a program at Warner University down there in Florida, and he, uh, he brought all that here because he knows the know-how, the ins and outs, and what he need to do. He made a lot of phone calls. He have a lot of connects. So therefore, he was calling a lot of people that scheduled us for the uh, season. Another improvement for the club is the ability to recruit players, and Darton State's first-class facilities excite many prospective players. One of the main things at Darton that gets a lot of players' attention is the facilities. Darton has one of the best facilities junior college wise in the nation. Darton State Basketball Club member Nate Boynton thinks that the new schedule gives them a chance to play against better competition. The schedule got better so it gives us the opportunity to showcase our skills against scholarship teams. Freshman Rodney Morris says that the club is a great experience for him. Uh, I love it. I love it. It's a great experience. Uh, I think we're coming together as a team for the, for the first year as a program. For Cavalier Connection, this is Casey Sanders reporting. Coming up next, we'll tell you about a club you can join if you like to play video games. That and more after the break. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend.
Welcome back to the show. The Darden Recycling Program helps reduce the amount of trash that ends up in landfills by taking materials and sending them off to be used again. To make products, the program needs your help. The biggest thing they could do to help with recycling is to put what is supposed to be in the containers. The bottles in the bottles, cans in the cans, paper in the paper. It's clearly marked on top of the containers and we can't use styrofoam, styrofoam. we cannot use used paper plates and napkins. Um, we have a tendency to get a lot of trash in some of our containers inside and if the students would really help us with that um, and just recycle properly. Story also says that the program will hold an event in April for Earth Day. For more information about the program or if you would like to volunteer, call 229-317-6806. For students who enjoy shooting zombies or who like to play Call of Duty, there's a club you can now join. Andrew Ragsdale introduces us to the gaming club. Students are seen together upstairs in the student center all of the time. What brings them together? The gaming club. Well, it's more of a social gathering of students than it, I could really say it's an actual club. It's a group that we're all just up here to hang out and have fun. It's probably the most relaxing activity on Darton campus, and it is just the best thing that I could possibly think of for us because, well, we're gamers. You know, it's a place that you can go to and be yourself. The gaming club is basically a group of people who are interested in either gaming, be it online gaming, card uh, games, board games. In meetings, they discuss upcoming events, such as lock-ins. Meetings are very random. Uh, we just wait for the president to say when meetings are. It tends to be a bit scattered, but you can very easily meet with one of the representatives, like Landon, who is our president right at the moment, and you know just get meeting times from them. We also have regular lock-ins, which are a lot of fun. They're so much fun. We ended up doing Humans vs. Zombies last time, and it was absolutely wonderful. The gaming club holds two lock-ins per semester. The lock-ins are uh, periodic events, you know, periodic get-togethers that the gaming club holds, where we'll come to one of the multi-purpose rooms, and we'll all, you know, we'll all partake in different gaming activities. There's, there's, you know, people bring console games, people bring their computers, and every now and then we'll do something like um, <clears throat> Humans vs. Zombies, which Humans vs. Zombies is uh, it's more seasonal than just something you could do any time of the year, but that's because it deals with zombies. And basically we're divided into two teams, humans and zombies, where the zombies try to quote unquote hunt down the humans, and humans have to fend, off, fend them off with nerf guns, nerf swords, anything foam, uh, balled up socks, anything like that. The gaming club isn't just about playing games, it's about finding a community. We have the gaming club really as uh, an activity that helps prevent stress. It's a stress-free environment, it's so much fun to be in, and it's just a good place for to hang out and meet people. And when we're here at Darton, which is all about you know getting to learn people and knowing everyone better and getting involved really, this is probably the best thing in the world. Getting involved is really easy. Well, we always hang out in the upstairs of the student center. Uh, our president's usually always around. And just pretty much what you do, you go say, I want to join gaming club. And you pay the $5 fee to join, or you can pay a $15 fee that covers all the lock-ins that we have, as well as going onto the uh, server that we have for gaming club. For Cavalier Connection, this is Andrew Ragstow. And last, but certainly not least, this is Casey's final episode here with us on Cavalier Connection. He is graduating and will be going to Kennesaw in the spring. Casey, we did some digging and put a little something together here for you as we look back on your time here. Hello, and welcome to the first show of the Fall Tulu. Oh, okay. He's really enthusiastic about his sports. It's kind of strange. Big Alabama fan. <laughs> And he also has a strange obsession with Thor and Chris Bosch videos. Kind of weird. Um, nice guy, I'm really going to miss him though. Grab the garlic, how the vampires, servant leadership posted their annual blood drive. JT Phillips has the stakes. I mean, story. Oh, wow. <laughs> Casey, my best memory of you is you winning Homecoming King with me 
and the fact that you scored on the other team's goal. But that's okay though, you know, I don't judge, that's on you, you know. But I appreciate you always being there for me whenever I need you, and I'm definitely gonna miss you, but I know you're gonna be home anyway. Hi. Burritos, bacon, and midnight bowling. Where can you get you all like of these? That. Midnight madness. That's <laughs> Gordon. Oh, okay, that's one of the goofy things Casey used to do. You know what I'm saying? Casey, this one for you. Uh, have fun. Kennesaw, hopefully I'll be up there in a year. Um, oh, a couple of things, though. Um, I need both my Adidas jackets back since you stole them from me. Uh, you know, you, you play basketball. We still got to play one-on-one. -on -one, but uh, don't forget you when you get ducked on. Um, oh, yeah, tell your best friend, Chris Boss, I said, hey. All right, thank you. I have never seen somebody enjoy NBA highlights as much as Casey. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw him watching D-League highlights or preseason NBA highlights. Um, I'm pretty sure half of the page views for NBA.com last spring uh, were a product of Casey's efforts. His dedication, his intensity while watching NBA highlights uh, are second to none. I can't believe that you, I can't believe that you right. left that out. Casey has been in my class three semesters in a row and each time he's been in my class he's had a different girlfriend <laughs> not only that between semesters when I saw him he had a separate girlfriend for between semesters and that's what I'm always going to remember about Casey three, two. it was Halloween and he wanted me to make him look like a vampire and I actually made him look like a kitty cat. He had a little nose and whiskers and he was the cutest thing ever. It was it was the funniest thing ever. And um, then I had a dress that I, I wore for Halloween and I actually wanted him to try it on and he, he did. And so he wore makeup and a dress and it was, it was quite funny. Um, that's my funniest memory with Casey. As far as through journalism, I think the funniest thing was having to sit through The Wizard of Oz. Um, they were rehearsing and it took six hours to get through. We ended up leaving there at like 11.30 that night. It was a major bonding time and, and it's things like that that I'm going to miss the most when Casey leaves. Um, but I know it won't be far, so I'm gonna miss you, Casey. Thanks, Casey, for being a good friend. Thank you for always being you, Casey. Thank you for being a great brother. Thank you for trying to teach Carly to like a real football team. Roll Tide. Thank you, Casey, for being a good student in my class, even when we weren't talking about the Atlanta Braves. Thank you, Casey, for always being the crazy, fun-loving butthole that I've come to, to really adore and love. And I'm Casey Sanders. We'll see you next time. That's what it's all about. That's right. Wow, that, that's uh, that's that's really impressive. I don't even know what to say. Uh, y'all have been really good to me, and I really appreciate everything y'all have done. I'm gonna remember every single one of y'all. I made really good friends here. You know, it's really it's a really good bonding experience, and I just gonna I hate having to leave and leave all y'all behind, but okay, well y'all have to move on sometime, I guess. But it was great, and I love every single one of y'all. Too bad you had to go out when uh, Alabama doesn't make it into the Yeah, SEC we don't have to talk about that. That's we can <laughs> that can be safe for off camera, off camera activities. <laughs> All right, well that kind. <laughs> That's going to wrap things up for this episode of Cavalier Connection. <laughs> you can stay connected with us by liking our Facebook page, www.facebook.com/cavalierconnection. You can also watch all of our videos on YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash Darton Student Media. I'm Carly Shiver. And I'm Casey Sanders. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll tune in next time for Cavalier Connection. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>